Hi, Kevin here. I'm working on a Hydro Max power brake system on my motorhome. I'm retrofitting my old 1972 Dodge Travco with uh, running gear, brakes, and everything just about drivetrain wise from a 1991 Georgia Boy sits on an Oshkosh chassis that has a Cummins and Allison. So I've got the engine and tranny and everything's in, it runs. One thing I was disappointed with is my brake system. The Dodge with the Travco system had a pretty sorry ass brake system. This is no better, so something's wrong. This Hydra Boost ought to stop this much lighter motorhome so much easier. So Hydra, Hydra Max. This is Bosch Hydra Max. It does say Bendix on some of the parts. So Bendix and Bosch must be in must have been in bed together when this was created. There's no information on the computer on the internet that I could find on the Hydra Max as far as how it works or being able to order parts or anything else. So it was real limited on what I could do. So what I wound up doing is I tore the system down to learn how it works. Now I do have some hydraulic experience. I had a repair shop and actually my the hydraulic repair part of my repair shop was probably the part I liked the best about it. I had a big big inventory of parts and rebuilt motors and pumps and I've never been into a hydro boost or a hydro max. So anyways I thought I'd shoot this video on how this is put together and my little exploratory surgery on how it works. So if other people run across this problem, perhaps this will help them out. In no way am I a trained technician on fixing Hydromax brake systems. So I'm just giving you what I think and how I think it works. And I'll explain why I think it works. But I'll leave the rest up to you. Let's start with how it's supposed to work to the best of my knowledge. This right here is the inlet port. This right here is the return port. This brake system is in series with the power steering. It runs out the power steering pump. The shaft runs through there. It sits right about like this when it's all the way in. You look up inside here, you'll see this is where fluid returns, goes into the return port. In the back here, you'll see a, a cutout. That's where fluid from the inlet dumps into there. So it dumps in between this wall and this piston. This seal keeps it from just crossing over into the main chamber. There's four cutouts right here, four drill passages. They go into the center passage and they come out through this hole. So during normal operation without using the brakes, fluid continuously runs through this up, upper port in between the piston and that back wall through these ports into this center section which would be the main body passes through this screen through the outlet port and out just for hell it inside this outlet port is a spring and a little piston when fluid stops flowing the spring pushes the piston out and it grounds this plug here and this is a plastic connector so there's 12 volts to this side, and as long as fluid's flowing, it's not grounded. But when this fluid stops flowing, this spring and that's inside here will ground. And that will turn on this electric backup pump. Now this electric backup pump mounts to these two ports on the bottom. So this is the pressure this is the pressure side. And there's a drilled out passage right in here that this pump, when activated, puts pressure through, which gets fluid back into this section right in here. So one of my concerns was, and yeah, you can actually see that port right through here. That's from the electric motor. It's where it puts pressure in there. One of my concerns is, there's a check valve here. If this check valve's, valve's, if this check valve's not working, then it would allow 
the pressure to continually flow through this pump and prevent my power brakes from working. But to the best of my knowledge, this is working. I took it apart, blew it out, and I put brake cleaner in the hole with the check ball sitting there, and I watched it, and it didn't drop, level didn't drop down. So that's about the only real way I can pressure test this. I don't have a wide enough grommet for my um, air hose to put it on this side. But let's assume for now that this is working. But one of the things I could do for my troubleshooting is I could build a plate, which I might do this size, and bolt the plate in place of the pump and see if I have power brakes. So that's how it goes through the inlet port, circulates through this hole, out through this hole through the main chamber. Now, when you go to activate your brakes, let me set this back here. You remember this piston's inside there. When you go to activate your brakes, this is your, where your pedal rod attaches. Inside here, you'll see a pin. If you saw that pin pop out, which I hope you did, I'll do it again here a little closer. You'll see a pin pop out. So it's just a little stroke, maybe not even a quarter inch stroke. So this stroke is your initial pushing of the brake pedal. And it's supposed to hit against this part right here, this whatever, spring valve, piston, whatever. And this is inside of this hollow shaft. And you got this hard plastic seal which rides on the end of this spring-loaded deal. And also, this is machined. You'll see the holes all the way around the edge there. There's five little cutouts all the way through the length of this piece of steel, which allows lube oil to get back on the back side here. And there's no, there's no way, there's nothing in this mechanism. All this is, I took it apart. This is solid shaft going from here all the way across. This piece, which butts up against a, a lip right here, the spring, and this piece, which when you compress the spring, there's a snap ring in there. So I pulled the snap ring, pulled it apart. The only thing I might have found was a little bit gritty, like just filings over the years had trapped itself in here. But anyways, so you piss fluids flowing through here, through these ports and out this port. This piston inside there, supposedly what happens is this little push from your pedal, pushing through this piston, pushes this seal against the seat inside. And once it seats, that diverts the flow from going through and dumping out here. So now pressure builds up on the back side here and it pushes this piston out, which takes the effort off of your leg and, and converts it into hydraulic force. <clears throat> so it's that little push from that little teeny nub inside there that transmits through here and pushes this seat inside there and activates it. And once it, once it seats up, then this whole piston assembly will push, push forward and this spring will compress. This does not move. This will be up against here on the, and it does not move. And that's how your brakes are applied with Hydra Boost. So the two things I could see wrong, well, possibility, well, there's several possibilities, but this seal's in great shape. I'm sorry, I've sold my shop years ago. I don't remember the exact name of this seal, but I've worked on them a lot. And actually on a lot of cylinders, if I saw this seal, it had one of these seals and it was in this good shape, I wouldn't touch it because this, this will stretch. It's like a Teflon. It'll stretch and it doesn't like to come back to its shape. It will, but it doesn't like to, and you run a risk of damaging it. But this is in good shape, so I believe we don't have, I do not believe it's bypassing the piston. So the possibility is it could still be bypassing through the pump which would take it from one side of the chamber through the other. So all your effort to apply your hydraulics, your, your actual brakes in your mass cylinder would be all the effort from your foot. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of effort. Trust me, that's something that's hard to stop without it. And, or the other thing is this piston is not traveling far enough or it was damaged or the seat's damaged to where it's not sealing. I put everything inside and just setting it on end like this and dropping the seal in and filling this with fluid or, or we're actually squirting fluid through these reliefs, these drilled passages, that seal was stopping it from passing through. 
I do believe there's still a possibility that this pen is just not quite stoked, stroking out far enough. What I've done is I took a piece of emery cloth, set it on the flat of the vise there, and I just worked my, my end around trying to take off just a thousandths or so, just a little bit, maybe to give me that little bit more of an edge. And what that does, that this is where it seats. This screws up in there. And this edge actually seats against here. You can't see this O-ring when it's all the way in. And the O-ring groove is pretty deep. So I really feel like if I knocked off just a little bit here, I'm not harming anything. And I'm, I'm putting this piston, this pin, I'm putting this pin closer to this piston, which would be like that by now. So it has, doesn't have to travel as far to force this seat up against, this seal up against its seat. I know there's a lot of things in play here that I don't understand as far as the engineering of it, as far as tolerances and stuff. But it's obviously something's wrong. But everything looks great as far as its condition. So the best thing I could tell is this is not allowing the power brakes to, to seat. But if I force it to, it will. But, and I, but I've also cleaned the heck out of, out of here. This is where dirt and debris will collect. And I sprayed it out with brake clean real good, so maybe that's helped me. So I just want to give it every possible chance of working before I put it back together. And I just wanted to shoot this video, explain to you how it worked. And hopefully this will help people in the future. Looks to me like I got a gap here. I need to double check, make sure that's all the way in. And some are taking this apart. I thought I saw a loose piece of O-ring. So I have to check my line that goes in here. And perhaps a broken piece of O-ring was in there jamming it up. No, I didn't see it when I took it apart. I got the booster back together. Got attached to the master cylinder, got my old electric motor back on. It's barely dangling in the vise, so I gotta be careful. I bench checked it. I think I I think I made some progress. I'm gonna try to set the video up. Hopefully it's close enough where you can watch it. I'm just bench checking it with air. What I'm doing, I gotta take all of my hands, all three hands to do this, is I'm shooting air in the supply port. Watch when I push it in. Right now it's hard to push. And about to that that line right there, that dirty line, about as far as I can go. I'm gonna shoot air into it. I'm gonna push it in. I want you to watch how much further it goes in. It's still hard to push, but watch when I take the air off. What happens to the to the rod? See that's that travel from the brake. Pedal. So I use this going. I watch and move, and remove the air. Pushes me back out. I think I got hydro boost. Kind of excited about it. We'll see what happens. Hey, it's been a couple days since I had a chance to put that power brake booster together. Been dealing with a lot of rain and everything. I finally got her on, drove her around here on the ranch, and um, I've got power brakes now. I'm really excited about it. Can't wait to get this Travco motorhome on the road. Thanks for watching.